This is Cameron Chai from azonano.com and today I'm speaking to Dr. Stuart Parkin who's an IBM fellow. He works at the IBM Almaden Research Labs and he's an experimental physicist and of note he's a pioneer in the area of spintronics. He and his team have already developed a radical technology that, in, that, that enormously increases the storage density of hard disk drives and today he's in Sydney at the ICON 2010 conference to talk about racetrack memory. How are you today Stuart? Very good, thank you. Good to hear. So what is racetrack memory? Racetrack memory is a new type of technology that we're developing based on some fundamental new concepts in the area of spintronics. What racetrack memory will enable us to do is essentially to completely replace magnetic disk drives with a solid state technology without any moving parts. So it will be more reliable and uh, will use less energy and will be much faster, a million times faster to access the first bit of data than is possible today in magnetic disk drives. But in addition, racetrack memory could also replace uh, very many forms of solid state memory. So computers today are rather complicated because they need a whole hierarchy of different means of storing digital data, ranging from magnetic disk drives, which is a great technology, provides an incredibly cheap means of storing digital data, but it has a few drawbacks. It's un a little bit unreliable uh, and it's extremely slow. Uh, and at the same time then, racetrack memory in computers, you have solid state memories where you trade off essentially cost and performance. So a complicated hierarchy of memories what we want to do with racetrack memory is provide a new type of memory that would be, if we, we would like to call it a storage class memory. It will have the enormous storage capacity of a magnetic disk drive at roughly the same low cost, but it will have the very uh, high access, very rapid access time for reading and writing of conventional solid state memory and the same high reliability of solid state memory. That's what we plan to do. Right. And, and how does it actually work? I, I hear analogies between race tracks and race cars and things like that, and that's obviously where the name came from. But how, how does it actually work? How well, okay. Uh, the, the name of racetrack is because it's, it's really a new, uh, a very different in structure from nearly all conventional memories, solid state memories. And what we want to do, the reason for we call it racetrack, is that we're going to have magnetic nanowires and the nanowires will contain magnetic regions, like little race cars. And the race cars, we're going to move these race cars up and down these nanowires, which will, t will stand above a, a silicon wafer. And so uh, in sort of the same area of silicon, where today we store a single bit in a conventional solid state memory, we can store many, many, many bits by storing them out of the plane of the silicon wafer into the third dimension in these very, very tall magnetic nanowires. So the concept is the data sort of exists like in these, in these tree trunks, and you bring the information down, you race it down to the surface of the silicon wafer where we'll have means of detecting and writing that information into the nanowires. And then we'll race the information back into the forest, uh, into the tree trunks when we no longer need it. That's the idea. So we can shift the information up and down these trunks, if you like, these nanowires, and then just read it in the surface of the silicon wafer. So each racetrack will have a single reading and writing device, but it'll be t entirely different from disk drives. There's no moving parts, no moving atoms. It's simply magnetic moments that we'll be reorienting, which gives it its fundamental advantages of high reliability. And uh, how much faster do you expect it to be than, than current technologies? Okay, so we have to again compare uh, current technologies means that in a typical computing system right, a lot yep. of the data will be stored in disk drives but the disk drives are so slow that in order to carry out computations you really have to take the data and put it into a solid state memory where you can operate on the data more quickly. So uh, we'll be much faster than disk drives. We are about a million times faster to access the first bit of data. Compared to conventional memory, we'll be on the side of the very, very fast memory, not, not as fast as the very fastest memory, which is static random access memory. But that's a super duper f expensive memory as well. So it will be, we'll be very, very cheap, about the same cost as a disk drive, and therefore about a hundred times cheaper than uh, most conventional solid state memories. So it's very, very cheap, but high performance. So it'll be excellent for things like portable computers and like mobile electronic devices, that type of thing? Certainly. In fact, it, it will be fantastic for all computing systems, including mobile and non-mobile applications. But mobile in particular will be very useful because if you, if you have a laptop with a disk drive and you have to rotate this glass disk, it's a very large object, it takes a lot of energy to accelerate it to the speeds uh, at which you, can, you need to rotate it to get even the modest access times that are possible today. So uh, with racetrack memory, because we're not moving any atoms or any parts, we're going to use much less energy. So for portable applications, and generally speaking, uh, 
uh, when we're in an environment in which we, we wish to reduce energy consumption, and uh, we will use much less energy in the racetrack memory than compared to magnetic disk drives. And approximately how far off do you think racetrack memory is from hitting the marketplace and, and being found in typical consumer items? Well, racetrack memory, so turns out I, I first proposed this concept about five years ago, and in the last five years, we've demonstrated the fundamental uh, materials and the physics, which is entirely new, so um, work. So uh, maybe as an aside, let me mention that the physics is that of spintronics. Spintronics is the idea that we can create entirely new materials and devices by controlling the flow not of electrical charge, but the flow of electrons whose spins are oriented in the same direction, parallel to one another. And by flowing currents of electrons whose spins are oriented in the same direction, the so-called spin polarized, we can use those currents in a variety of ways. So in the past, you mentioned at the beginning, we had a big impact on magnetic disk drives. So I and my, uh, my colleagues invented a technology involving materials which we nano-engineered on the nanotechnology scale, and by creating sandwiches of magnetic layers separated by non-magnetic regions, what we could create extremely sensitive detectors of magnetic fields, where the property of the device is essentially that of the manipulating manipulation of spin polarized currents. So back to your question then, then we, so now we've demonstrated in the last uh, two or three years the basic physics works. We could use these spin polarized currents in a very different way from the sensing devices we developed for magnetic disk drives. We can use the, the current of spin polarized electrons, which actually corresponds to a current of spin angular momentum. We can use that current to manipulate magnetic regions in these racetracks, in these uh, forest of tree trunks. That's how we're going to shift this information up and down the tree trunks using nanosecond long pulses of spin polarized current. So we know that it works. So what we need to do now is build a real prototype where we integrate in a single racetrack read the reading and writing devices and demonstrate that's possible. We estimate that will take in the region of three to four years. And then beyond that, maybe another two or three years to develop manufacturable prototypes, I mean arrays of these racetracks. So sort of generally speaking, it's in the range of five to seven or eight years out before it might come into the marketplace. All right then, well, for everybody out there, I think we should all keep an eye out for racetrack memory and hopefully we will be seeing it in, the, in our electronic devices in the not too distant future. I hope so. All right, thanks very much for your time, Stuart. And Thank you. Uh, enjoy your rest of the time in Australia. I'm, I'm sure I will. Thank you very much.